Today I got a quick little species spotlight for you on my favorite blue eye, the Pseudomigo luminatus. This is a nice little fish that does well in a species only tank. I have them in with Celestial Pearl Danios, Neocaridina Shrimp, and some Stiphodon Anie. But this is a great little fish that is, I would say they're fairly undemanding. I keep mine at a temperature of about 76 to 78 degrees and a pH of about seven just kind of more for the shrimp but they can come from tannin stained swamps in the Timica region of West Papua they were introduced somewhat recently in uh, 2011 uh, under the nickname Pseudomigal species red neon and with the coloration I'm sure you can tell why it's a beautiful species and it would be a great addition for any nano tank or anything where there's not a lot of fast moving fish so this isn't something that you want to put in with other species of large rainbow fish i would keep it to some slower docile moving tetras or the celestial pearl danios but nothing that's going to outcompete them for food i find them to be a little bit um, slower feeders uh, but they enjoy a wide range of food i feed mine live baby brine shrimp almost daily the adults juveniles they all like to take to it also extreme curl flake sea chem chlorella flake uh, some of the adults can take the extreme nano pellet as well but other types of live or frozen food like daphnia cyclops uh, rotifers, anything that's nice and small for them to eat is uh, gonna work just fine for them. I haven't found them to be picky at all. The adults can take some bloodworms or brine shrimp, but uh, it might be a bit big for them. I have a really, really simple way of breeding them. They're not, it might not be the most effective way, but all I do is I let them breed in this mop here. I'll pick the eggs. They just look like clear, like glass orbs. I'll put them into a breeding net with some java moss. I also moved a mop into the net. Just kind of let it do it, uh, let it do its thing. They hatch, and then once they hatch, I just allow the fry to get big enough so they can't fit in another fish's mouth. If they're really small like this. Even the juveniles and the adults can eat these fish. But once the fish, the, the larger fry in the net get too big, I then release them. Basically, if, it's, if they're too big in the net, put them in the main tank. There's that fine line of, are they going to fit in the fish's mouth in here? And are they big enough to eat the newly hatched fry uh, in there? And I've also had little tiny fry just hug the side of the net if you saw him, uh, or see, there's a tiny fry right here at the couple tiny ones. What they do is they find these crevices and they'll hide from the bigger fish for shelter. But I haven't had a large issue with predation. This is a very peaceful fish. Uh, I've raised a ton of Neocaridina shrimp alongside them. They don't really predate heavily on the shrimp. It's just a really perfect species. If you're looking for a really attractive nano species, I would give them a shot. I got mine um, from Marcel, who is a very well-known rainbow fish breeder. Also has kept a lot of pseudomigills, and you can find him on Get Gills uh, as Marcel's fish, or you can. Uh, go through Aquabid and he'll post as Roseline17. One of the most outstanding people I've worked with and gotten fish from. So, and with that, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If there's anything I missed and you want to know about it, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. But otherwise, happy holidays and take care, everyone.